You're listening to the Beans and Dice podcast, a podcast about how we game. Welcome to the Beans and Dice podcast. I'm Carlos. I'm Rob. I'm Michael. I'm William. And I'm Emmy. And this is a podcast about how, how we, we game. game. Thanks for joining us for the audio version of our podcast. Of course, there's a video recording of us recording talking live for you folks on youtube but this is the audio version of the podcast i want to thank all of you for joining me on this awesome this has always been my dream this oh. is the part this of is your dream this this, right here? this, uh, this audio dream. piece <laughs> oh okay Robert, when i brought this up to me you, doing a podcast when <laughs> i brought this up to you like almost a year and a half ago i said it i wanted to do a podcast i wanted to do yep. audio medium it's it always so, your thing yeah. right and this yeah, is it asked you for it left and right and yeah, all you wanted to yeah. do is video YouTubes. Yeah. You put your pretty face yeah. on the camera. Where the YouTubes got us. But this is this is what I enjoy. So I want to thank you all for, for yeah. continuing this with me. Uh, we're, we're hoping to keep going with the weekly format. Um, I know that it's allowing us to get into more topics because we don't have as many games played each week. Yeah. As long as we do it weekly. Get a little more in-depth on, on what we've done, what we've been playing, what we've been up to. Yeah. yeah. So maybe this time we'll be able to get into upcoming games that interest Ooh, us. Right? Yeah. Talk about the, the games that we've purchased, you know, our new hauls, our acquisitions. And uh, we can get into some gaming adjacent topics as well as any modeling and board gaming pimping that we may have done. Right. To talk about those things. So maybe we'll get into all topics today, folks. That'll be amazing. Yeah. But let's lead off into the first topic. We're going to talk about games that we've played in the last week. So we'll start off with Robert. You get us going. Okay. Um, let's see. The most recent thing that I finished up, we talked a little bit about it last week, was uh, me and my daughter, Emmy, have been playing uh, Cantaloupe, the uh, the 1980s-inspired uh, computer point-and-click adventure-inspired uh, game that they've turned into, I guess you call it a board game, although it's it's really in a book. It's uh, one of these games where you flip through pages, uh, you're trying to solve little uh, puzzles as you go through. Um, this style of game, you're uh, you're kind of going through, uh, really similar to the point-and-click adventures, you're uh, adventuring, you're, you're kind of going to locations, you're finding items. You're combining different things in uh, uh, a book. So you're, you're getting codes uh, from things that you find. And you can match up two different items by putting them side by side. And they have little arrows on them. And so where the arrows line up, they point to the first two digits of a code and the last two digits of a code. And then you've got a book uh, over on the side of each page that has those codes. And you look them up. You decode them with a little red film, the old red film uh, with the black writing underneath. It's like super secret spy sleuth stuff from back in the 70s and the 80s when I was growing up. That was high tech back then. But we had the super the, secret spy code like a <laughs> yeah. drink, be sure to drink your oval tea. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, <laughs> but you take them and you decode and you and you kind of look at it and it gives you, sometimes it gives you some text. Uh, it's it's humorous. It's 1980s. Oh yeah, my daughter. Uh, she has Emmy, no idea what that movie reference She has no idea what we're talking about. So <laughs> it's just over there clueless. But uh, <laughs> anyway, we enjoyed this. I talked about it a little last week and I had mentioned that we were probably a little over halfway through and and we were at about the five hour mark and the game was advertised to be to five to six hours. So I was a little concerned, you know, that we were dragging it out and that it was uh, it was going to just be a, a 10 hour thing. And it, it was a bit of a slog um, with that. So I was I had mentioned and I know Michael was excited about hearing about the game that it, it took a little of the enjoyment away. But um, I think uh, Emmy can chime in on this as well. But we we changed our attitude, to our, our second play, and we made it a lot lighter. We we uh, before when we run into something, we sit and stare at each other for 10 or 15 minutes and, and try to figure out every combination of combining this with this or use this over there and go to this location backtrack and we were just kind of beating our heads against the wall um but as I mentioned, we discovered that the game doesn't penalize you at all. It doesn't have you keep track of how many clues you take. It doesn't keep track of the amount of time it takes you to play. And so we lightened up in our second, uh, I would call it our second half, but the second half was, was less than two hours. So we, we played theoretically kind of the second. It was probably about a third of the game in much less time than we played the first half. It's because when, as we ran into issues, as we ran into things that we didn't know right away, we were much more free about just saying, hey, let's take a clue, you know, whatever. Instead of sitting here wasting a bunch of time trying to beat our heads against things, uh, let's just do it. And it, it, for me, it really uh, picked up the enjoyment. We kind of plowed through the second. It was probably about an hour and 45 minutes. So I'd say we played it probably, and it was less than eight hours. It was probably a little over seven hours that we that we finished the game. And uh, I'll, again, I'll have Amy chime in here a second but I, at the end we kind of looked at each other and we both said yeah that was fun you know it, it's, it's something now that we will 
we'll play the uh, uh, the second one because there's a second one that's tabbed to come out. So we'll definitely plan to jump into that. But what did you think of me? I liked it. It was lots of fun. Uh, at the beginning, it was kind of you'd sit there and it was kind of like pulling your hair out. It was like, no, we can't take a hint. That's not an option. Well, let me ask who who drove that kind of thought. So at the beginning, it was kind of like I we were sitting there and we we're like we really don't know what to do. And it was like. We could take a hint. And then we sat there for about another five, ten minutes before actually doing it. And then in the second half, it would be more like we'd look at each other and be like, do you know what's going on? No. Do you know what's going on? Absolutely not. How about a hint? Sure. And it would just be whoever got tired of the silence first would say, how about a hint? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, you know, I would say I wasn't driving it. I know you, uh, you put I me know. on that AP side of things. But at the beginning, I think both of us were, were reluctant to do that. And again, we had both played some of the Unlock games. And in the Unlock games, as I mentioned before, it's on a, you're playing on, a, on an app. And the app has you on a timer. And you're graded for how quickly you go through it. And when you take hints, it downscores you at the end of the game for each hint that you take. And so I think I had just become a little pro programmed into that way of thinking and then when i when we started doing this i kind of felt like uh oh yeah this this doesn't feel right it feels like we're cheating it feels like we're we're uh, not using our brain power you know we, we shouldn't we should be able to figure this out we're two smart people we shouldn't have to take hands we should be able to do this but as we played then uh, mm. uh yeah will's not so sure but uh, <laughs> as we played <laughs> william um, she might be no, smart it, yeah. but it's he <laughs> and william yeah. Yeah. Well, well, uh, william I, I called you will i'm just trying to i'm trying to get out of that habit of calling you will so william that's right but uh, anyway but the uh i think as again as we got over that we found it more enjoying and i know mike i, I actually i was telling michael i was telling uh, uh emmy that i've got it packaged up again we put it all back together we put all the cards back in order so i know both you nice. and dan had asked about it so whoever wants to grab it first we'll make some arrangements to get it to you and i would recommend it again our final thought on it is is once we were done we kind of looked at each other and we're like yeah that that second uh play that we did the second night we played where we lightened it up and that would be my recommendation to you is in playing it uh have fun with it you know don't try to uh, and, and you probably will don't and, be so anal yeah it was probably us we were just yeah. being very anal we were being very again reluctant we were like we should be able to figure this stuff out but it's more fun <laughs> if you just kind of play it and go through it and and uh yeah, and, and, and beat your head exactly exactly yeah. and there's right, a couple cool. puzzles in there that are tough there's a couple things where it gave us the hint and then uh we, we'd look at it and we'd be like oh gosh i have no idea what to do there's a few little i feel there was a little couple little things they threw in there that it was like oh it was almost like shame on them because they they knew that you weren't going to figure that out, but yeah. I don't know. Maybe your experience will be different. We'll see. But yeah, I'll uh, I'll hand it off. You have to tell a uh, uh, tell us in the future how you liked it. So, all right, cool. Yeah, definitely. Thank you. Yeah. Anything else on that, Emmy? Before we move on, or just really quickly, one of the things I want to say about it is that it is like re- it. Dad didn't think it as much. I'm a really corny person. I like the, yeah, the really stupid jokes. And it was like full of little stupid jokes. Like you'd do something and be like, wow, you really are an idiot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. It would it would poke fun at you for sure. Like the old 80s classic adventures. If you do something weird, it would like uh, you do something and be like, yeah. That's kind of a given. Yeah, and there was some dad jokes in there. There were definitely some puns and some little funny things. And so we had, I mentioned in the last one, we had some laugh out loud moments. There were there were a few that were eye rollers. They were like, ah, oh, wow, that was bad. But wah, 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 yeah, wah. there were a few in there that we, we really <laughs> would kind of would kind of get a good chuckle out of. So it's it's fun. Yeah. And you said it, the five hours, that's it. That's that five hour experience. The first book, yeah, it's going to be a multi multi chapter kind of thing. So it was the it was the first book out of uh, I guess Michael said they had released uh, some information or had released uh, the the title. I think I saw some art from the second one, but from what yeah. I understand, it's going to be at least three. So there'll be there'll be at least one more after cool. that. So yeah, nice. Uh, Rob with uh, Cantaloupe, Cantaloupe, yeah. Cantaloupe. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Mike, you're up. What you got? Uh, Marvel Champions is really the only thing I played this past week so far. Uh, Roth came over, um, I don't know, one day, I can't remember. I think it was maybe Sunday and he wanted to finally dive into the rise of red skull, which was like the first, uh, big expansion for Marvel champions. It's like a five, I think it's five scenarios. And we got through three. We had to play the second one twice. It was like kind of ridiculous. Like we just didn't approach it the right way. And, we got our butts handed to us, but uh, just to, I mean, for people that don't know real quick, uh, Marvel Champions is, uh, Fantasy Flight Games will not refer to it as a living card game. It, it's uh, Oh, they're not? No, they don't call it an LCG, even though it's uh, an LCG. LCG. It is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, you kind of have your character, uh, your What hero. do they call it? I'm curious. 
LCG is trademarked by them. Yeah, uh, that's it is, weird. and 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 I and I think they actually used the the letters LCG after it a number of times, but then I read somewhere that they do not refer to it as a living card game, and I think it's because you have your character and and like a normal LCG like Arkham Horror or um, I think they did one for Lord of the Rings too. Yeah, yeah, yeah Robert yeah. and I played that yeah, one. We did right. It's like this long continuing story. So every expansion feeds off the previous one, and you you're carrying your character from one story to the next, and you're gaining you know items and weapons and that sort of thing. Where this game, it's you you can pick whatever character you want. You can build that character's deck. You know, you get between forty and fifty cards to build their deck. And once you finish the scenario, except for like this red, uh, red skull one and, and the lar- other larger ones, you basically finish it and then you put it away. And it, next time you play, you can grab another hero and, you know, use a different type of, uh, you know, you could be more of the justice side or more of the aggressive side, or it's like this constant, you're just constantly building a deck whenever you want to make your character, you know, to play it how you want to play it at that time, which you know, I, I guess it's not a living card game, you know, by definition, but uh, I still consider it an LCG. I think everybody else does, too. Sounds like it. I do know that their LCGs tended to have an arc, like a planned beginning, a planned middle, and a planned end to it. I don't think Arkham Horror has an end anywhere in sight, right? Oh, uh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> They've been coming out with stuff for that for years. So, no, yeah. They're going to milk that cow, yeah, still going, that yeah. cash cow. Well, they're, yeah. they're actually redoing it now. So they're yeah. going to redo some of the artwork and um, the way they I release. Don't know if they're starting. I'm sorry, what were you saying? Rob? Oh, I said the way they release the packets, uh, packages now yeah. and stuff. Yeah, they're going to do them where yeah. there's going to be two boxes. There's one that's going to just have your, your characters and your deck building cards, and then there'll be a separate box that'll be the actual adventure that you're playing through all those cards. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. So any special events I mean, in this playthrough? Um, it kind of they start mentioning uh, one of the Infinity Stones in it. So I, I think they're gonna, you know, th- this is the first big one. I know the the second big one, which I also have, I haven't gotten into yet, which is uh, based off of Guardians of the Galaxy, that comes with Rocket Raccoon and Groot. And then the next big one that they're going to release is actually um, Thanos with the Infinity Gauntlet. So there may be more Infinity Stones that are going to show up as we go along, and then it'll probably wind up with this big, you know, come to a, you know, a crescendo so there at the end. Conclusion, yeah. yeah. Hmm. But it's on my list to play. A... Oh, you haven't played it yet? No, it, I haven't played because it because it, it does yeah. remind me of the Lord of the Rings card game. And okay. I really enjoyed that system. Yeah. Uh, it's a very similar system to the Death Angel. I don't know if you ever played that one. No, Fantasy Flight that Games. One. It's one of their first co-op games with that style of play. Okay. Uh, but it, it, I've played many types of game that are like that and enjoyed every one. Yeah, and it has the same similar gameplay as... Um... Arkham Horror, where you know you're using cards to pay for other cards or to pay to take actions and that sort of thing. So, I mean, I think if if you were shown it and explained really quick, you would catch on immediately if you've already played their past LCGs. Yeah, it's probably similar enough. Yeah, yeah. And that was you and Raph. That was me and Raph, and he's gonna be coming over later this week, and we're gonna finish up. So we have two more scenarios left in that box, and cool. and then uh, we'll see what happens. But they they do have you keep. It's just to throw in one more thing is um, this last one that we did. Uh, well, uh, maybe I shouldn't say anything. I don't want to yeah, give spoiler, anything away. Spoiler alert! Spoiler alert! <laughs> yeah, no. yeah. I don't want. I don't want to give anything away. But it is. They are doing some cool things. Some cool mechanics that uh, are not in the base game or in the previous ex- the smaller expansions that they had. So it's pretty cool. Cool. That's Marvel Champions Fantasy Flight Games. The LCG, not an LCG. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. The card game is what it says on BGG. Just the card game. So. The card game. Oh, there you yeah. go. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, William, what have you got on recently played? Well, we just played a what chapter one yeah. of Betrayal Legacy. Betrayal Legacy. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, without giving any spoilers. Yeah, Michael, don't give us any spoilers. Michael's played through chapter the one or chapter whole two. Thing. One. I was, I was. It's the second scenario, but it's called. But chapter it's called one. chapter one. We did the prelude. Oh, okay, all right. Yeah. So yeah, right. the so first full, full the first blown full chapter. chapter. And I will say, he Carlos whoop. 
our butts. Yeah, he was oh, the was uh, the yeah, traitor. Was the, I was uh, the traitor. He's a traitor. Yes, nice. and he <laughs> eradicated us all. It was over the pretty, house. Uh, pretty quick after the haunt started. It was over quick. Yeah. On the first floor, <laughs> on the second floor, there's blood everywhere. So yeah, the bodies hit the floor. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sure you saw that posted. Now you know why. Yeah, yeah, yeah it, was, it, was, it made me a lot of sense. Um, I I was great because uh, I had I had a weapon card. I didn't name it until after we lost, and the name fit what I did so um, that was actually pretty neat um, I had the deed originally so now it's been passed on to him so we'll see what happens oh, see what nice. he does now so. the deed only has like a few spots to control it no it the flip the card over oh has, flip has, the card it's over all, it's all 13 chapters oh I gotta keep reading yes I see yeah. <laughs> oh, okay reading is fundamental so um, this is my so what do you think of it so far this is my uh, first legacy game experience total but I not your first game. betrayal game not my, no my first betrayal game but my first uh, jump into the system of legacy. Uh, I think it's a good one for me because this one has a lot of theme and story. I don't know if okay. I would have the same with pandemic because I'm not into that. No, game. there's theme and story. Oh, is there? There are pandemic. lots of it. So yeah. I mean, yeah. um, I was always skeptical in legacy type games, not because you know you tear stuff up and throw it away, but because it's just you thought you know, it was a gimmick. I thought it was a gimmick. Yeah. So I mean, I can see why people don't buy into it, but. I mean, if it works, it works. Yeah, it changes the game. Yeah, when I mean, you got stuff coming and going, we're adding stuff in. We're you don't know what's up, next. And, yeah, no. you don't know how setup's going to go this sure. time. Yeah. I will say the fact that it surprises you is great because you know you you break up a box terraform Mars. We all pretty much know most of the cards now. Yeah. Right. So you know what you know people are going to do. Oh, I know. Oh, look, this is the corporation guy. Oh, okay, I know what your game plan is. Oh, this is what you got. Okay, this one is like. What are we doing? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Oh, someone's got to walk away now. And what are we three doing? I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I don't even know what his powers are. I don't know what our powers are. <laughs> and we lose. And we're done. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. I like the experience. I, I definitely recommend everybody who hasn't played Legacy Games, which I know is a lot of them out there. Yeah. yeah. Well, I was going to say, a lot of people are talking about getting tired of Legacy. The Legacy's just everywhere right now. But I, I'm nowhere near my I, fill. I, I, I love Legacy. I don't man. see why. Maybe because yeah. they... Uh, probably play a bad legacy game i, I yeah i like seafall <laughs> no yeah well there's some bad <laughs> ones but yeah <laughs> i'm gonna say that because me and carlos will jump into the theme deep in of the pool all the way in and i think the people make a difference so yeah it's who it's i role play that game yeah so do the I. betrayal I mean, when you play it i'm reading with I mean, role play i don't um, know why you had a pirate pirate <laughs> accent and then next you know he had a redneck accent I'm like well, I <laughs> have no control of my accents yeah. whatever he comes went, out he comes went out went through like three things that they're like okay. in one paragraph in one, yeah. Yeah, like, <laughs> we're not sure what was going on over there he's having a stroke or something yeah. <laughs> so but I mean if I smell that. burnt toast yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> but Emmy I mean, this is your first time playing b Betrayal right yeah she would never ever played any Betrayal before yeah. any Betrayal uh, it's something I introduced my wife to De over a decade ago, long, long time ago. What did you think of the Betrayal game? It was fun. I enjoyed it. I've always liked more of like the kind of games like this. Like I've always, I've been like, oh, I want to play Betrayal, or ooh, I want to play games like this because it's just always been more like my theme kind of thing. Yeah, the the what, what's the word, Robert? Ma the the dark theme, the horror, macabre, or, macabre. Or, Is that yeah, the word I'm looking no. for? Yeah, like the dark. Because I remember we introduced her to Mansions of Madness. Yeah, oh yeah, she likes and that. She loved that. She that likes whole horror the whole thing, Cthulhu <laughs> yeah. idea. And so she's the Arkham. We watched the uh, the Arkham TV uh, series, which I heard unfortunately they're canceling after uh, I think one season. But uh, uh, I know a lot of people are upset about that. But yeah, she likes that Arkham. Oh, but we can save that for the uh, Game of the Jason. I want to hear about that series. Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, so I mean, you you got to play Betrayal. How how hard were the rules? Were you able to get into the game? Did you feel like you could do what you wanted to do? <laughs> yes. Yeah, I could. It was oh, it was a lot and everything. I'm not a super decision-y person. Big words. Yeah. So So like when I got into it, everything went for uh, like the beginning of the game it was more like, "Oh, what do you guys think I should do?" But then Nora towards the end I was like, "All right, I want to do this. So let's just go do this." Mm. <laughs> she kept telling me she wanted to cry. <laughs> yeah, it didn't go well for us. She was on the uh, the non trader side, and so uh, it, uh, again, she was the last one. She did the best running away, so she was the last one to survive. And um, 
I haven't played much Arkham. I, the first Arkham, uh, or not Arkham, the Betrayal. First time I had played, I think we talked about before, was uh, Dan uh, and Ben introduced it to me over at the Your Turn Board Game Cafe uh, probably about a month ago, maybe a little less than a month ago now. That was the first time I had ever played. We just played the base game, and uh, they taught me how to play. And uh, I'm not crazy about the player elimination part of it. Because uh, you were eliminated first. I was I was saying, my, in my other game, I was not. I was the traitor, and I didn't get eliminated. And But when I saw that that was a big part of the game, in that one, as I was eliminating people, I was like, oh, you're out of the game, huh? I, 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 I killed you, <laughs> and you're just going to sit and watch the rest? So, I'm, yeah, I'm not, I'm not crazy about that part, either giving it or taking uh, from that. But um, this one, I don't know if they're all going to go this way, and, and Michael may have some insight yeah, I into that. Know this. But, but here, once, like I say, Carlos finished us off pretty quick and so as far as i was the first one out this game but i mean the game was done in 15 minutes uh, after that so being eliminated wasn't that big a deal but I, if it was a situation where i was going to be eliminated and have to sit for 45 minutes that's not as much fun <laughs> but yeah did you find much of that in the in the long run of this yeah, how does game, it progress or? with the player elimination well we've only gotten i've only played up to scenario three so oh. you know, okay you know, so we'll let you know yeah, we'll yeah. Let you know. <laughs> you'll, you'll end up letting me know yeah okay. but again i was i was the only one that survived all three scenarios so oh, okay. i had the same bragger, character bragger. I, it was like, I started i started out like in my 20s and now i'm in my 80s uh, <laughs> like in the third scenario, yeah, so. each one you play like 30 years go by or something so yeah yeah mm. Now, my hope is that because it's a legacy game, that the games can be quicker. They don't have to be as long as a standard solo shot I game. I hope, yeah. And we can, even if there's player elimination, that, that that haunt wraps up with a good amount of time, doesn't linger too long. And did you remember, Michael, did they seem to go pretty quick after uh, each game, the three that you played? I mean, I think we played the three scenarios in one sitting. Oh, okay. So, That's good. Yeah. So I like that really. Idea. Yeah, it's not like a standard uh, betrayal game. You know? Okay, but good. I think the scenarios kind of move along a little bit quicker. Good. It's like, it's like 14 games, I think, potentially. is, is, uh, 13, about what it is. 13 chapters with the prologue. So okay, it's 14 games. games. Okay, yeah. yeah. That's, so that's, that should be yeah. fun. I, I was the traitor, so I yeah. revealed the traitor, and I had to go into the bedroom. Yeah, go into My wife's room, in there with the newborn. Read the traitor tome. I'm reading my traitor tome, and I'm getting <laughs> flashbacks to, you know, 13-something years ago. Playing. Right playing uh, Betrayal at the old house and I, I turned around and told my wife I said, I, I, this feels good like I, I remember how much I love this game that feeling of having to be you know just isolated off right you, you've, you've been kicked out of the group you're no longer a friend Yeah. and although I finished reading mine quickly my rule setup I, I always know that the team setup is actually a lot deeper usually a lot deeper than the trader setup because yeah. I'm on my own yeah, we got to scheme a so little bit. So I knew I had to wait and sit a little bit, but that whole time you're thinking about, man, those guys are all planning against me. <laughs> like, what what <laughs> what abilities are they getting? All those feelings just really come back to say, this is a good game. But I do have to thank you, and I was really excited that you got excited about reading for me a lot. Yeah. The pull out a card. It's like, hey, Emmy, what did your card say? It's like, I don't know. You want to read it? Yeah, like, yeah. A lot of older words in there, and, and I want to read it with funny accents. Yeah. <laughs> bad accents. Wait, wait, we hope you don't. Really next time. bad accents. Yeah, give up on that. <laughs> <laughs> that was uh, Betrayal Legacy, our chapter one, second game, chapter one of the Legacy. Says we'll, we'll be bringing this one up often. Uh, to let you know if it still holds water as we as we continue to play it. Uh, What's Carlos been up to? Oh, what do you think? Uh, Blood Bowl. Blood Bowl! <laughs> <laughs> you said that different than I did. Yeah. I said Blood, Blood Bowl. Bowl. <laughs> I'm sorry, I just woke up. What? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so we've been in our, our league game, and in this league, this was the week I kind of dreaded, right? Because uh, the week before, I got to play against Rob Hunter and just destroyed him. No, really? Like, Rob's newer to the game. And you know, it doesn't always feel good to beat somebody up, but it feels good. <laughs> <laughs> but this week, the week after that, this current week's game was against Chris Nelson. Chris Nelson has called in before. Chris Nelson, at one time, was the leader in Blood Bowl 7s on the international yeah. ladder. Yeah. Like internationally, number one of the thousands and thousands of Blood Bowl players across the world uh, with his record. So he's a good Blood Bowl player. And I was dreading this match. And it was everything I expected it to be. Oh, yeah? That good, huh? Right. I'm driving that ball. <laughs> now, I, I will say I had a couple of wins, like moral victories, okay. in the first 
quarter, first half of the game, I was able to exploit a hole in the middle of his defensive formation and actually move my ball forward, my team forward, my cage forward. I saw him take some notes in his little diary. Right? So I think I, I, think <laughs> I shot them a little again. bit. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I exploited that. And then I was able to get to the right sideline and start running my, my runner with the ball forward. But, of course, he comes in right – I mean, I was like four spaces from a touchdown, Robert. Yeah. Four spaces. Starting to feel good about yourself. That's like, like yeah. I'm, in the, I'm in the red zone, right? Yeah. Is that what they call it? Football, the, 20, the red yeah. zone? Yeah, in it. the 20? Mm-hmm. I'm in the 20, ready to score, and he just ticks me out, takes the ball, runs <laughs> it down, and scores it himself to end the half. Nice. Right? And then in the next half, I kick to him, and he scores. Rub your face in a little and bit. And then he yeah. scores again. Yeah, there you go. Right? So yeah, he you scored. Got, what, got what you deserve. Yeah, try to score on me. Yeah. <laughs> Three to zero, yeah. right, in, in Blood Bowl is huge. That's a bad loss. That is a – yeah, that's embarrassing. Yeah. Um, but that's what I expected, but I learned a lot, and 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 I really enjoy it. This is something that if, if you – have any interest in miniatures games, but are a board gamer, this is a board with grids, yeah. right? Squares, so you're not playing with the rulers and measurements. This might be something you want to try. I would say start with what's called Blitz Bowl. Yeah. Uh, Blitz Bowl is the Barnes & Noble version of Blood Bowl, yeah. which is very much more board gamey. Uh, but similar feel, so give that a go. That's Blood the one Bowl. I played. Is Blitz Bowl? Yeah, we played some Blitz Bowl. Yeah, we yeah. didn't play seven. We played yeah, Blitz, Bowl Blitz Bowl. You destroyed yeah. me. Yeah. Yep. Yep. That was it. <laughs> uh, I wanted to touch also. I don't know if you had it on there. The uh, Arkham. Uh, speaking of Arkham or earlier, um, I jumped back into Arkham. I say jumped back in. I mentioned previously that I've played through the base uh, uh, set. Twice now, Carlos and I played through once uh, when I could keep him awake, and then uh, <laughs> and then me and my daughter Emmy played through uh, once. We played through the first uh, set, and then I, I had borrowed uh, Muhammad uh, had uh, uh, was was reselling. Uh, he had the base set plus the first couple of. Uh, scenarios i think they call it um and uh, i borrowed that from him and we never got into it right as i was going to jump into it with my daughter and get beyond that base set we uh muhammad needed it back because he had sold it so uh, we gave it back to him so i'd always said that i was going to plan to come back to it and i actually had purchased a copy a new copy of the base set maybe about a month ago three four weeks ago and I, my plan was to play with my daughter and what we were going to do is play through that base set again and then as we went we were going to start picking up the uh, the packs as we uh, progressed, and I was just planning to buy them one at a time. But Dan, over at your turn, uh, got wind that I had uh, done that and that I was interested in doing that. And I'm not sure. I think we were just talking over another game that we were playing. And uh, he mentioned, hey, you know, I happen to own everything they've printed for that game, except for, I think, one scenario he didn't have. But he said, I have everything. He goes, if you want to get into it, I want to get into it. Let's just let's do this. And I was like, okay, sweet. Yeah, I was like, I, I definitely plan to play with my daughter. But uh, since Dan owns everything, I couldn't pass up on that. So... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's a, a free I mean, piece. I bet they, oh, that's got to be thousands of dollars worth of uh, expansion packs and stuff that he's got. So we got together. Neither one of us had played it in probably over a year, uh, although Dan had played a little bit before. And uh, we got together, um, uh, I think it was Monday night. It was Monday night this last week. Uh, his shop's normally That's closed. gaming. Yeah, yeah, your turn's usually closed. And so I went over there and met up with him at the shop, and we uh, we played through that first scenario, kind of pulled out the rule book. We had to refresh our memory on some of the rules. So it mm. took us maybe an hour and a half uh, to get through that first one, which is fairly light. And Carlos and my daughter, uh, Emmy, may both remember that by the time you get to the third one, I've, I've heard some people say that third one in the base set is one of the hardest ones in the whole series. And I don't know if that was intentional. Uh, was that, that point, the one with the barrel? No, that was the first one. That was the first, first one. The barrel. Okay. Yeah, the third one is your. Uh, you 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 don't really beat the third one. You have to. They, they introduce you to the idea of withdrawing because one of your options in the game la, is if you la, get. La, 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 oh, la, okay. La, la, la. <laughs> well, it's it's in the basic actions. It's something you can do, but you 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 think in the in the thing like all these actions you can do. You can move. You can attack. You can do all these things, or you can withdraw. And you think, well, why would I ever withdraw? But why would I ever surrender? Yeah, why would I ever give up and just leave a scenario? Scenario. But yeah, again, it's just not really spoiling anything because in some yeah. of them, you're, you'll learn that you have to do that at some point. And in, the, in, the, in that scenario, will grade you not on whether you won or you lost, but on how many of the objectives you met before you withdrew. Mm-hmm. And so the third one, uh, Carlos and I didn't quite understand that. We were getting our butts kicked. And we were like, why are we losing this? Why is this so bad? You know, why can't we finish this off and get all the objectives? And we were really kind of stubborn. And that was when he eventually fell asleep, I think, because we were trying to figure it out. But uh, that one introduces you 
gives you it kind of gives you the thought. Oh, in some of these games, how do you fall asleep to Arkham yeah. Horror but not Blood Bowl? Well, well, that's Just a different give me a story. Minute. But yeah, <laughs> but it introduces that idea that that maybe at some point you do have to withdraw if you get beat up enough. Leave the scenario. This makes sense yeah. though, because I'm thinking back to like early 2000s. I had been I had played or got introduced to a Cthulhu role playing game. Yeah. And it really felt like the the game itself was not about going into a fight and beating the monsters. Yeah. The game itself was like trying to figure out how to get away from them, yeah. how to keep your sanity, how to not go crazy. Sure. Right. So it was very much not a, a game of being a hero. It's a game of just trying to survive this crazy psychotic situation. Yeah. Yeah. So that would be in a withdrawal. I, I see that now. And people talk about it. And again, I, I'm just dipping my toe back in the water of this, of this epic uh, stories that Arkham tells. And I, you know, you can talk to people who, who've played all the series and they, they just rave about the incredible ways uh, Arkham has found to use just a basic deck of cards to do so many different things. And some of these stories will introduce you just to using the cards for locations and, and using the cards in so many different ways. They say as you play through the series, you'll uh, you, you'll find lots of these moments where you'll be like, wow, that was really cool what they the way they used the cards in this one, which was completely different than they would ever had done before. And so that's what I'm looking forward to is getting further into the series, getting more into that kind of stuff. And, uh, you know, again, I'm sure there's a lot of people listening out there who are just kind of laughing and they're like, ah, oh, you don't know what you're in for, you know, that, that have yeah, gone through all this. Yeah, the system is so deep now. Yeah, and that's what I've heard is that they just, there's other games now are copying ideas that Arkham came up with just in these different systems that they've come up with, different ways to use a deck of cards to do these really cool things and so i've tried to intentionally not get spoilers tried not to look ahead uh i, I want to be surprised as we go through it so i'm really looking forward to it and then emmy i told you that as dan and i play through it if you want to do it again um i'll let you kind of run the show i won't do it and that way you can discover these things on your own so that that can be fun too no okay, thanks rodney yeah, exactly. Hey, I'll leave this for you, for to, you discover to discover on your own. On your own. <laughs> <laughs> the single player mode. <laughs> but, uh, so yeah, I'm getting back into Arkham. I plan to give regular updates. Hopefully Dan and I are going to play where our plan is to play every Monday night, get through at least one scenario every Monday night. And maybe night, not give so. the spoilers, but give the feelings. Oh, yeah, yeah, like, for sure. You know, what yeah. feelings yeah. did that game give you? Yeah. Was it sadness because you couldn't win? Was it happiness or was it, you know, easy? Yeah, yeah I'll try to keep the spoilers out of it for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. That, that was our uh, recent games played, so... Now we're going to get into talking about our new game halls or acquisitions, uh, things that we've purchased, maybe deliveries we've gotten. And the dog. The and dog the dog. Has dying. something to say about that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and she thinks the mailman's here. Yeah, something. She's used to that. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, I'll kick us off in, uh, in our video today of the, the live stream that we did, the call-in show. We unboxed what just got delivered right before the live stream yeah. started, uh, Rallyman GT. Rallyman GT. Now, I'm super excited about this title from 2020, this racing game. We've got to sit um, in front of us here, yeah. Yeah, Rallyman GT. It has a single-player mode. It's it's one to six players. I like racing games. Michael, you've been a part of our leagues that we've done for uh, Thunder, Alley, Thunder Alley, right? Yep. And I have uh, Formula Formula Day, and I've got Down Force, and you know I've got uh, uh, was that Road po- Apocalypse Road? Yeah, definitely a racing I, fan. I got a yeah. lot of racing games, and I'm, I I kind of stayed away from Rallyman GT, thinking okay, I think I have enough racing games, but I think this one's gonna do things just a little bit different, just enough to find its niche. And instead of having a standard map board like you would be used to in a racing game, uh, it's more like the the bicycle game. What's that one called? Uh, oh, Flamme Rouge. Flamme Rouge, Rouge. Flamme Rouge, Flamme Rouge. Yep. where you're laying tiles yep. to create the course. So the courses are all going to be different every time. You're using dice almost like in uh, Formula, Formula Day, Day yep. to determine what gears you're in as you take your turns. Uh, use dice for braking and for coasting into corners. Uh, each dice has a number of hazard symbol. The higher you up you go in the gears, the more hazard symbols are on those die, uh, on on that die. Uh, your coasting has the least amount of hazard symbols. Uh, your braking has a few, you know, has a few. And then you're gonna take these dice and chuck them, and then the hazard symbols will determine if you get three or more that you spun out. Right, that's gonna be your mechanism to push your luck as you go around the corners. But you can do things like go flat out, meaning take all your dice. Roll them together at one time so there's no mitigation, no changing of dice around the corners, right? You're going to flat out throw them, and whatever happens, happens. 
But at the end of that, you're going to pick up some focus tokens. So that next time you go, you can choose to roll your dice one at a time on each of the segments of your turn using focus tokens to re-roll or to skip that die roll, right? To say, okay, I'm going to spend some focus tokens here so I don't have to roll that die when I take that corner so I can break into that hard turn to get into a low enough gear to make it. So I, I do feel this one's going to bring in some... Just just enough difference from the games I have to be enjoyable, but I, th- I think with my kids being a little older now, 10 and 14 for my middle kids, it might be still within their range, not as easy as Formula D, but not as difficult as Thunder Alley, and I can still have some enjoyment. Like, I, I want a little bit of challenge in my race games, too. Yeah, so. yeah, it sounds like it'll be somewhere in the middle there. It sounds like definitely a little step up from Formula D, and then... Uh yeah, I'll, I'll be interested to see how it compares to Thunder Alley. Uh, Thunder Alley, a lot of card play. I don't know that it's particularly complex, but there's some movement. Uh, oh, and uh, it's not hard to play. Complexity. Yeah, It's hard to win. Yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah, it's yeah. a lot of strategy. Yeah, yeah, a little strategy, a little luck. I, yeah. I, when I took my kid to Daytona to watch the 24 hours of Daytona, we stayed at a hotel out there because they canceled camping. Don't get me started on that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but in the hotel room, I taught him Thunder Alley. And he left more frustrated than happy. And that's when I realized there is a lot of connecting those cards in order of operation yeah, yeah. to be able to get your cars around him. I was able to lap all my cars before he was even able to get half his cars a quarter way around the track. Yeah, it's a little thinky. Yeah. So, yeah, that's not a good feeling. So that was my acquisition. Uh, Mike, I think you're on the acquisitions list. Uh, yeah, it's really not for me, though. Uh, my oldest son, Matthew, uh, for his birthday, I think, two birthdays ago uh he wanted uh shovel knight the kickstarter for shovel knight so that finally arrived today um Dang. after i don't even know how long ago it it actually <laughs> got funded but uh it's a pretty big box like i was not expecting the size of the box it's it's as, i don't know if you guys have seen the uh, suburbia anniversary one that they did the Kickstarter for. It's like a really thick box. I haven't seen it in person. I've seen pictures and stuff of it. Like a terraforming yeah. Mars, big box, thick box. It's like a mansion of madness, big box. Okay. Yeah. 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 Like that size, something I didn't expect considering the gameplay, but um, I haven't opened it up or anything, you know, cause it's, it's his birthday gift, but uh, he was all excited. I was like, Oh, I think you need to come by and pick up some of your stuff. You know, like I'm always joking with like, Oh, you left your stuff here. <laughs> and uh, he's like, well, I haven't even left work yet. And I got to go home. And I was like, all right, well, you know, I, you know, I, then I sent him a picture of it. He's like, Oh, well, uh, maybe I need to come by. And, <laughs> there you, you know, go. Well, <laughs> get the a little spark going. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So uh, the gameplay from what I understand it, it's, very close to what the actual it's based off a video game shovel mm-hmm. knight yep. never heard of this it. yep. it's, it's a, a it's a platformer yeah it's a it's a platform it's like a 2d platformer but it's more of a current one so yeah, these are all words i do not understand <laughs> he has no clue just keep going so it's like <laughs> super <laughs> mario brothers okay like yeah. super that mario i get brothers. side scrolling yeah. almost yeah yeah mm-hmm. side scrolling for those uh, of those those are that's called a platformer <laughs> <laughs> uh so it plays like that where uh there's like a, a square board with like grids on it and your characters are moving down the board and as you get to the end of the board a new one comes up and then you Oh, it is a side scroller. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a side scroller on a tabletop game. So um, we're excited to get it to the table. Like Cobra. Oh, we should. Or Contra. Like Contra or. um... Contra. Yeah. 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 That's exactly what it's like. Yeah. Yeah. So he was like, oh, we should play Sunday. I was like, all right, well, you better learn the rules and teach it to me because I'm not doing that. (laughs) But uh, yeah, so that was that was my only uh, acquisition. I'm excited to see inside the box. That reminds me a little bit of another game that you taught to us over at my place. Um, The one where you're digging down into the earth. It reminded me kind of like of a dig dug. Oh, Super Motherload. Super Motherload. That was it. Yeah, that's a that's a good one, too. That's kind of like a a scroller. But you're you're digging vertical down through boards and like a dig dug adding boards. And yeah, you're you're finding gems and stuff. You dig. See, this is more of the video games that I'm aware of. Yeah, I mean, Sony I'm not that old, but I just never got into video games. <laughs> past, past the N- SNES. That's about as far as I got. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, I, and you know what? These are tips that I'm learning. You know, dad tips, bro. Because when when my kid who just turned 18, how do I get him back in the house? I find you know find ways to to gift them things and have them come visit because that's going to be a weird feeling. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's called bribes. Yes, <laughs> I'm not. I'm not above it. Come I'm not above come it. Come back home. <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess my last item on the game halls is uh, Miniature Market had a sale this week. It's still going. 
called uh, Victory for You Sale, and it's a sale on historicals. So a lot of historical games in there, uh, it's like forty percent off of stuff. But oh, man. what I focused like on you dropped a lot of money. No, <laughs> I, I kept it. I yeah. kept it okay. What'd you get? All right, cool. but, but what I focused on was they had MDF terrain. Mm. Right. So William, I, I know you came with me to a tournament one time at uh, in Citrus Park at Strange Realms. We did a kill team tournament out there. They had that table with all that MDF terrain. So it's like the 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 wood oh, laser yes. laser cut wood. Mm. But you build it into like, like 3D bro- like terrain, like broken, towers. It's like broken token terrain. I'm yeah, like it. broken token oh, cool. type terrain. But now you, your towers and bridges and buildings. I was buying stuff for $15 a pop, getting a four-story tower that's like a foot tall, foot and a half tall. Mm. So with Kill Team getting its new edition coming up, uh, I'm wanting to get Kill Team back to the table. That's going to be a great way to help build more terrain for the table that I want to set up. So that, that's what I stuck to. Cool. Uh, but I'm excited about that order. And and I think that wraps us up for game halls. Emmy, did you buy any games? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no. No. <laughs> that ends that segment. <laughs> so now we're going to talk about uh, upcoming things of interest, games of interest, or gaming news. You know, it's what we'll get into here and just give you talk to you about things that we think are cool or that we want to highlight. Um, Mike, we'll start with you. you. You've got a few things on this list. Uh, I think my first thing is Unsettled by Orange Nebula, which is a Kickstarter that uh, it's been delivering overseas for a little while now, but because of our current shipping situation here in the U.S. uh, with ships coming from abroad, uh, it's being it's taking a little bit longer than they like. uh, But I keep seeing I hate it when you see people in the States that get these uh, advanced copies of these games and they're playing them and reviewing them and, you know, bragging and uh, <laughs> I want to play that game so bad because it's the same company that did Vindication, which is easily in my top 10 games of all time. And I tout it every time I get a chance and I'm sure everybody's sick of hearing me talk about it like that. But this is like a, um, you have like a base box that's like the base of the game, uh, like the bones of the game, and then it's a it's a sci-fi game. So it's like a, a they call it like a space puzzle game. So you are crash landing on different planets. Uh, each each expansion is a different planet, and every planet is like way different than all the other ones. And there's different hardnesses. You know, like this planet's easier than this one, and so on. But it's this puzzle of trying to whatever the objective is it's a puzzle of working cooperatively to you know do the objectives and get off you know the planet if anybody dies you've lost but you can pick up dead you know cohorts and drag them off if you have to but there's this whole so no man left behind you can take the corpse with you and still win right but there's this mental aspect to it. Like uh, some people, you can be, uh, you know, f- spores may infect your brain and then you start acting differently during the game. And it, it's just like, it's very unique, uh, or at least I believe it's unique from what I've seen people play. And it just, if you can get into it uh, thematic wise, I think it's, um, I, I think it's going to be like something that, uh, it, it would it may appeal to a broad range of people so what do you think about the ice uh, iss was that uh, vanguard iss vanguard yeah oh, vanguard, is that a similar yeah. thing to this it's similar to this i uh, i back that uh, i i did too i think that one has that one has an overarching story right i believe that's like a uh, the more you you know there's um I don't want to say anything about it, but I think everybody knows, like, I think it's about finding out uh, where, like, one of the people on your ship or maybe you on the ship uh, came from, like, another planet or something like that. Whereas this is just, like, one planet, and it plays differently every single time because you're picking specific... um, uh, but, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, attributes for yourself. Like, it's different every single time you play. So you, oh, you're building you a different play, character every time. Right. So you may play one way this way this time, and then you could play the same planet again, but because of the attributes that you were given or drawn, you have to play it a totally different way. So, Hmm. 
It, it kind of sounds slick. like uh, like you know Star Trek Next Generation episodic versus like yeah. DS9 instead of right a, uh, long uh, arc uh, yeah. DS9 yeah the best <laughs> the best Star Trek series yeah. ever ever best one oh, DS9 on, man. No, we're not even gonna get, let's not go there we're not gonna Cable start Drew, that conversation now I well, am folks, getting some fe- lost some subscribers now I am getting yeah. some feels here of like yes. lost in space kind of a feel uh, like with I the new series where they're like hitting too. a different planet now they got to figure out how to deal with the issues on this planet oh we right. escaped but then we got shot off to some other crazy planet yeah yeah and it looks yep. pretty no, I'm looking, I, I find it very similar to look, that yeah and look, the artwork is amazing yeah, the bgg we're flipping through it here and it's uh it's nice the uh, um, looking at the cards though i i get the feels of of uh seventh continent right with the square yeah. cards for different is that locations i'm thinking yeah yeah a little yeah. bit yeah mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, it looks like kind of like for me, like almost like No Man's Sky, the video game. Oh yeah, I guess you could say that. Yeah, yeah it looks a lot is... like that. I yeah. mean, at least, at least at least the artwork does. Yeah. <laughs> Carlos like Carlos is giving us blank looks. What the heck? What, what are we say? talking about? No Man's Sky. <laughs> what, 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 what? <laughs> yeah. No, this yeah. one looks pretty. I think if you find a good themey group, uh, this one might work. You know. Yeah. That yeah. is unsettled and i like the idea of the boxes like being different and when you when you oh, talked about that it got me a little should, excited because you should watch an unboxing of of that game yeah. and i did the they, i did the I did, way yeah. they store everything yes. in the main box yeah. oh man and that's all in there it's, yeah it's pretty cool and they, they even did a thing where like each planet uh you know because it has like the square cards uh that are the planet itself so mm-hmm. like seven continents box, islands yeah, so when you open up the box for the planets, they have a tray inside that holds the cards in place. But if you sleeve your cards, you can actually take that tray out and then it fits the sleeve cards like it should. Like some some boxes, the insert will be, it'll have the size for like sleeve cards, but you know, right. obviously the cards aren't sleeved. So they're kind of like Plop moving around, around and yeah. they don't touch the top because you need extra room for the sleeves. Well, this actually has a tray inside where if you're not sleeving your cards, it, they fit perfect. And How meta. The top. <laughs> How meta have we gotten that we now have inserts for inserts? Yeah. Well, <laughs> it, you know, it's a smart thing. This this is a very thinky company. Like, they don't, this is only their second game that they've ever done. And it's like, they really think everything through because they want it to have a purpose and they want it to, you know, have that wow factor, I guess. Kind of like the but, Apple of board gaming. Like, their first focus is the user uh, interface, like how the person interacts with it. Yep. They have that mentality of like, even if it's a component that you're not going to see, you're still going to make it look good. You know, that Apple mentality, like the inside of the computer is going to look just as good as the outside. And you'll even never see most it. People would never see it. You're still going to do it that way. Yeah. That, that's, that's a good company to support. No Altoids tens or anything. Or boxes shipped to you with all kinds <laughs> of stuff <laughs> ruffled around. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Poking that bear. Don't yeah. Yeah, leave, that, leave that alone. <laughs> That was unsettled. Uh, I wanted to talk about the Z-Man game news. Uh, I'm excited. Uh, I know Robert and I are big pandemic fans. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Huge pandemic fans. Yep. But we now put- with Z-Man announcing the uh, World of Warcraft, uh, of Wrath of the Lich King, yep. a pandemic system game is what they're titling it. It's got minis. It's got monsters. It's got heroes. Yeah. It's got the pandemic system. Yeah. Now, William, I know you're not a huge fan of the pandemic system, but you did play Pandemic Rome with me, and we had a blast there. Well, I played a lot of, well, not World of Warcraft, but Warcraft 3, and Warcraft 2, and War- all the Warcraft mm-hmm. series. So except for you're the, familiar with the theme. I'm familiar with the theme. Now, mix that with Pandemic Rome, right? And now we're playing cooperatively against the bad guy. I mean, you with me on this? You with me? I'm gonna. I'm curious to see if they're gonna follow the storyline of the Lich King. See what goes from there. And I don't know the storyline of the Lich King. I, I never got very far into video games, but just the idea of, of playing a fantasy version of Pandemic uh, with minis. Yep. Each, um, each um, character's I'm gonna in. have asymmetrical powers, from what I understand. So uh, kind of like uh, Pandemic, like Pandemic, but a little more ramped up. Um, they're gonna have. Uh, uh, things that you can level up and you can get additional powers as you go. The bad guys are going to spawn in different areas. Uh, I know I heard a little talk about it on Dice Tower today. They were saying, uh, uh, Z was pointing out, who's a huge pan, uh, Pandemic fan, that it's uh, kind of more similar to the Cthulhu version of Pandemic that they put out that a lot of people are, think are one of the, is one of the best Pandemics, but it's very difficult to get. Although he did point out here that there's three 
three colors on this board instead of traditional Pandemic four colors. So that'll be uh, a bit of an interesting twist. But my guess is that was a balancing thing. Maybe the uh, the bad guys were too overpowered and having four different ones to try to solve and beat uh, may have been a bit too much. That but, is a lot. Yeah. And he mentioned uh, that the I think he said the Cthulhu one has fewer spaces than this one. So uh, even though there's fewer colors, there's more spaces for them to spawn and to run around on the board. But yeah, I mean, it looks like there's minis in this one. Nice, uh, fairly nice looking plastic minis. There's a little bit of terrain. Uh, there's like a castle that uh, looks like it's the foam core type castle that you put together. So uh, yeah, 3D terrain for yeah. like uh, the castle for the, the Lich King. I'm I'm excited. I just... Def- yeah, having to wait now. Now I gotta wait. Yeah, it looks like they kicked everything up a little bit of a notch. But yeah, how uh, any, any idea how long we're looking at on this? Uh, one? End of twenty twenty one. Oh, okay. So so, pre orders now. Okay. Um, at, at your game store. Okay. Yes, you know, I, uh, I'm in. I yeah, mean, yeah, it looks, looks about, good. I've already, you know, He's already done. I'm He's already done. letting Michael know at Armada. Hey, set me up for this one. And Emmy's fairly new to Pandemic. Mm-hmm. I just picked that up not too long ago, and she's played. You played once or twice, maybe. Um, I know. Thousand yeah. yard stare here. Yeah, I think I have. I'm not 100. percent Yeah, sure. if not, you you watched us play a bunch of uh, the oh, legacy. Yeah, yeah we, Rob and I played a bunch of Pandemic yeah, over there. You season put one. The chips out. I was gonna sit down and watch no matter what. Yeah, I was just gonna eat some chips and uh, drink some beers and <laughs> watch a little Pandemic. <laughs> Father of the year. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> wow. <Faux> show. <laughs> that was uh, for me. That's uh, Pandemic from Z-Man Game in in the World of Warcraft style. I'm excited about that. Uh, Robert, you wanted to talk about uh, Spiel des Jahres. Yeah, just uh, I think it was today or yesterday. Uh, with the Spiel des Jahres 2021 winners were announced. Uh, I think it might have been yesterday. And uh, let me start out by saying I have not played either one of these games. I know that uh, Carlos and William have played one of the two winners, but the Spiel des Jahres, the, uh, the main prize, went to a game that I have heard about and I really, really want to play, Micro Macro. And this is hmm. just a, a very different kind of game it's it's kind of hard to describe or explain but uh, where's waldo is the first thing everybody says that's it's, what i said like isn't this a giant where's waldo and yeah i mean that's that's gonna draw the obvious comparisons it's just a, a black and white map but it's a basically a huge the game board is just a huge map that you lay out on the table i think it's probably every bit as big as this table that we're sitting at right now which is a, a, a pretty large gaming table and you, you put this thing out and it comes with a deck of cards i think there's about seven or eight different uh, scenarios that you go through um tom Vassal today on, on uh, Board Game Breakfast mentioned that he believes this is the most violent themed game that has ever won a Spiel des Jahres award <laughs> yeah. um, because there is about half the scenarios or, or, or most of the scenarios from what I understand even though I don't know much about it are have to do with murder or killing. Murder. Yeah, you're yeah, trying to solve, these, solve these little murders, but um, they're little bunny rabbits. So, uh, Tom, so maybe that was it. Maybe the maybe the fact that they're little bunny rabbits takes the, the sting out of it. Uh, I know they did say that about half of the scenarios, they don't consider completely family-friendly. And so, from what I understand, I think it's eight decks, eight scenarios. Uh, about four of them are labeled uh, that they are not necessarily for families. And so, it allows uh, if you're playing with younger players, it allows you just to grab those decks and those scenarios that are um, more family oriented. They also are difficult, different difficulty levels as you go through the different decks. And so each one's labeled for how difficult it is and they ramp up as you go through. But basically you're trying to solve these little murders with these little bunny rabbits and they're, the scene is just a big board with all kinds of stuff on it. All these rabbits doing all kinds of odd things. and you're <laughs> like, uh, like a world's world though. Exactly. Exactly. So but it's the same character that you're kind of following throughout the story. So you'll see that Okay. same character in multiple areas on the map as you're going through the cards and the stories and, right. and so and you're trying to figure so out it's like a where's waldo where's waldo where's waldo you know it right. keeps going on you keep finding him everywhere <laughs> exactly and i understand you, you know as you go through it you're trying to you're not just trying to figure out who the murderer is or something you're you're actually you have to build the story so you as you right. fo- it gives you a starting place and then it yeah. points you in a direction and then as you go along you're kind of finding little a little trail that he was here and then he was over here and then he was over here here and you've got to put the story together so to beat each one of the scenarios you have to explain what what the motive was what happened what the scenario was why this happened and they're not all just outright murders you know they're not like just uh right you know there, there's going to be different things there's going to be crimes of passion there's going to be uh you know different things that happen so uh you're, you're having to build the story and tell the story of each one of these different scenarios to beat it and you kind of have to at the end you have to i, I don't know if it's questions that they ask you but you have to have all the right answers to to 
complete that scenario. So, uh, again, Spiel des Jahres winner. And so, as everybody knows and everybody has been repeating all day, I've been seeing online, is that when a, when a game wins the Spiel des Jahres, this one had been popular and it has been very difficult to get, especially here in the States. Um, but now that it has the Spiel des Jahres on it, I mean, you can count on that selling tens of thousands more copies just yeah. because of the Spiel des Jahres. That's I'll tell it. you what, man, all the, I knew it, I knew it, I knew it all those years. I've been prepping <laughs> in the dentist's office, reading my Highlights magazine, oh, there trying you go. to see. It's got to pay off. Right? It's got to pay off. <laughs> just trying to figure out what the differences are between these two pictures, yeah. right? That, that's going to pay off. They actually have a, a publisher for the U.S. now, so it, uh-huh. it's going that's to be redone and, and actually distributed here. That's what know, I heard. Without having to get it overseas. Awesome. Yeah, so I'm waiting. I can't, uh, can't wait to get my hands on that one. So as soon as it comes out, I'll probably try to scoop that one up. And let's throw that second Spiel des Jahres winner out to William. Uh, William, you're, the other Spiel des Jahres winner is a game that you have touted, you own, and you've played. Paleo. Yeah, we played Paleo. Oh, you own this game? He does. I, I've been trying to get people to play. You got me to play. <laughs> I'm, like, so, no. I'm so on for playing this game, Oh, you man. do? We it was great. We need we to play that when you get together. We've only played one. I haven't played yet. We've only played the first scenario and super thematic. Yeah. All the way through and through. Like, me and Carlos are looking at each other, and, you know, we got the, you know, you have your cave people, and, you know, uh, I think you were mostly, you were mostly building. Right, and then just like I did in, in Who Goes There, yeah, when we play, I, I, I love to craft weapons and stuff, and that's pretty much all I spent my time doing with my cave I, people. I think that's, I think I was mostly scouts, and, um, yeah, I think it was mostly scouting, and, I and think hunting, was, and hunting, that was it. So we had collaboration in that part we were just two players but um it really it really became really thematic real quick it's like hey yeah well we need to get i don't want to spoil it because if we play it you know me and carlson but i'll play it again but it was like we really need to get this this thing yes let's just do it and then we did it and we're like oh well that makes sense what just happened <laughs> that i didn't expect that but it does make sense and then it, when it did happen we had to deal with what that did to us, and yeah, yeah, we had we did have cave people die. Yeah, but, but, our graveyard was getting that. full. Our graveyard was getting full. Yeah. We our people were, <laughs> you, you know, it was survival of the fittest, and it was like, all right, who's who's gonna take this hit? Oh, that person only does one thing. Okay, bye bye. There they go. It was definitely pick the best person with the most skills to stay alive, and the weak the weak die. That's what it was. It was basically oh, extremely. So, so in Paleo, you're playing the role of Neanderthals or cavemen, mm-hmm. and you control your own tribe. Of Neanderthals came in, but William has a tribe, a but we're all still though, working right? together, yes. though. Yes. Yep. Right. Yep. So there's no one winner. We we the, all have to work together. The best part about that though is the cards. The face tells you, you know, it's a mountain. You might find goats for food. You might find stone to make stone tools. You might yeah. find. Uh, what, what William's talking about is that there's this deck you have to go through as a team, and the deck's going to have different events. Well, the backside to the cards are all different. So you're shuffling the backs of the cards together. So the, it's not like a normal deck where all the backs are the same and you don't know what's behind it. It gives you a hint. Yeah, it gives you a hint as to, hey, this card is a mountain card or a forest card or a cave card. right? So you kind of have an idea of what might be behind it, but you're not 100% sure. So you mm-hmm. kind of risk mitigate to decide which avenue do I want to take. And going through that deck was so much fun because you got to, the first time, explore it. Right. The first time you go through it, you kind of get to see, oh, well, if I go to those caves, I get hit with like a rock falling, right? <laughs> I'm not doing that again, right? You're, you're like a like a dummy Neanderthal learning, right? You're, you're learning by mistakes. And, and then there's stuff that happens in that deck and you're like, okay, that was cute. That was cool. But then the next time around when you get to the final boss and, and it all kind of made sense, like, oh, so... Oh, we shouldn't have done that. Yeah. Right? <laughs> well, I mean, like in one situation, you come across a wild boar and it tells you you must have at least two people in the tribe that have spears to take it down. So when you come across it, it gives you the option, do you wish to withdraw conf- withdraw, or, 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 or try for it? So we withdrew. So the card goes back into the pile to be later shuffled again. So it keeps oh. you. So you, it's the story of trying to still hunt that one wild boar that's going to feed everybody. Because <laughs> you know it's coming back. You know it's so coming, now you know I start back. crafting spears. Like, all right, we got to prepare. If we go back to that forest area, we're going to get that boar this time. But then you yeah. flip it, and it's like a woolly mammoth. Yeah, and you're like, okay, we weren't ready for that. <laughs> <laughs> Next. <laughs> so I mean, it, that's where it happens. But you have to be prepared because once you start hunting these animals, they're the deck's gone. It's all it's gone from the deck. So you can mm. choose to try to hunt it, and either it's completely successful, partially, or a complete failure. And if it's partial, you get very limited food. 
If it's complete success, you get every single bonus. And then if it's a uh, failure, then that's it. You just yep. you, you take just, the negatives. You just take the negatives, and that's yeah, it. Because you can take damage. And then the card goes away, and you will never come across that animal again. At least and that's why time. sometimes it's best to just withdraw. Like, we'll just leave it. That means we burn it back into the deck, and we're going to shuffle it back into the deck for the next round, expecting it to come back. It's, uh, it was fun. It's a really yeah. fun game. Yeah, I'm Good a, co-op. Excited to, to try that one. And I, uh, I was going to mention it. So we won the Kinderspiel, which is the, the gamer's game. So that's the, the, the Spiel des Jahres, um, the Micro Macro, was the family kind of weight game, the, the more accessible game. And this one was the Kinderspiel. So it's obviously a really good game if it won that award. I will say the one thing I heard about it, and I've heard this actually from the two of you, plus I've heard it a lot of other places, is the expiration it is kind of a one-shot thing, not so much that it, of, of like a, uh, a campaign or a legacy game where you play it once and you're done, because it is definitely replayable, but I've heard that first time through each of the scenarios is definitely the ah moment is as you're going through and you're finding these the woolly mammoth or the boar the first time. If you go back and you try to replay you know, scenario one, it'll be everything will be shuffled in a different order, but you won't have those surprise moments because you know that woolly mammoth mm-hmm. or, or that, you know, that boar is in there somewhere, so it takes a little bit away from the replay of it but i've heard that the first time through is so good it's definitely worth doing it is so, yeah. um i will say the scenarios tell you to mix two decks into yeah. the main deck yeah I've and heard then that. There, there's a little small thematic story for it which i think the first one was kind of like finding that elusive giant woolly mammoth and because that one's got the most meat you're trying to kill that thing to feed everybody to survive and, you know, I won't spoil it because we, we'll play, but I know something bad happened. I can't remember exactly what it was. I knew it was bad. Yeah. But um, I remember. I, I do know the second one has something to do with wolves. <laughs> and it has something well, to do with it, wolves. It's the and- way they, they <clears throat> built the, the game components. Right. Michael, what they did is they, everything is in small decks, alphabetically assigned decks, right? So it's, it's like A through J or something. Yeah. Like, even it's, higher. It's, I think it's higher. And they're all that. very small decks. And each scenario says, all right, combine these decks. A, J, and, you know, Q, right? That's going to be your deck for this scenario. But then it gets into the mission, right? And those are very specific cards. Now pull these cards from uh, these these things and set them aside. So then it all kind of, as you're going through the exploration deck, you can see the flavor of what that mission is at the end. It all kind of, very, very good narrative way of doing that. Yeah, good game design. Probably well-deserved award on that one william owns it and yeah we should get that one to the table on video yeah, yeah. Well, spoiler well. for everybody yeah <laughs> spoiler alert yeah uh let's see uh continuing with upcoming games and news uh michael you got paper dungeons on here yeah it's a uh it's a roll and write uh dungeon crawler oh um, i saw a video for this yesterday today yeah. It looks. Yeah, um, I just. I, I was a. Little, I think I'm a little bit. I was a little bit more excited before I saw the review, but I'm not going to let it discourage me because you know me and rolling rights. There, there can't be enough rolling rights. So yeah. Um, it's. Uh, it's not only. I think there's also. Uh, there might be card flipping in it too. I, I think there's cards because there's like, uh, boss monsters that you're finding in the dungeon. The dungeon is the same throughout, but the mon- the bosses are different, and it's very. From what I understand, it's very mathy. Like you, it's it's a lot of. Well, Carlos you know, loves those games. I do book balancing. <laughs> so, <laughs> if but, they can uh, combine the mathiness with the theme, I'm happy. Uh, okay, I yeah, think they do yeah. in this one. Yeah, that and, you know, the dice rolling and you have your character that, uh, you know, you're building up as you go through and you you find potions and, you know, to heal yourself and, you know, like a typical RPG or dungeon crawler and, but it's, it's more of a roll and write. So the artwork is Um, all very Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, it's it's very generic Dungeons and Dragons looking. Yeah, which is fine. No, it's great. That's not a bad thing. That's a good thing. I think they call the beholder the watcher. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Behold. No, no, just watch. Don't behold. Just watch. <laughs> Guy stands yeah. outside the window. <laughs> so uh, it hasn't been released here yet. I think it comes out in August, but I've already Jesus. I pre ordered it through. Um, can't remember who I pre ordered it through. But anyway, I, I have it on pre order and uh, I'm, I'm pretty excited to get that. 30 minute playtime is a good playtime for a roll and write. Not quite, you know, the hour and a half of Hadron's Wall. Yeah, <laughs> uh, <right. laughs> oh, we still got to get right. into that though. We got we got to give that a shot. 
Mm. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I'm excited. Yeah. Uh, Paper Dungeons by looks like uh Meeple BR. Meeple BRs, the the publisher on it, that one? It's a company from overseas that it's been out for a while overseas, but uh hmm. it's finally making it here. Cool. And we wanted to end our, our news and topics to just kind of go around the horn with upcoming uh, conventions, right? We wanted to talk a little bit about conventions, um, any news we've heard, or what our plans are even on that. Uh, so M- Michael uh, brought it up. We talked about going to Escape WinterCon. I think that's one of the first ones coming up. It's in September. September 14th, I think. I believe uh, so, the weekend of yeah. the, that week. So right after the 14th is when it starts. Yeah. So, are you are you guys going to that, or are you going to a Dice Tower? We originally planned. I originally planned for both. Both, possibly. Yeah. Uh, the Dice Tower okay. retreat. Well, Dice Tower East got pushed right back. Right back another year. Yeah. Yeah. So that one got canceled. Uh, but Robert and I, and I think William, jumped in on Dice Tower retreat. Right. Okay. Uh, which is going to be in that's November. That's a much smaller one, but that's uh, yeah, two hundred people in November. Focused. Yep. Yeah. Uh-huh. So when Dice Tower East canceled and they did Dice Tower retreat. Uh, we had already booked for Escape WinterCon, right. and we're waiting for the tickets to go on sale. But Robert and I got invited to uh, Jamie Stegmeyer's Stonemeyer Design Day, which uh, is the weekend just before the Escape, Winter. Escape WinterCon. Yeah, I see no problem here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Say so, uh, the money. Money's the only thing, only issue holding us back at the moment. But yeah, I'm going to be flying. Carlos is driving. Yeah, we gonna, got a whole family. I'm going to be flying to St. Louis. Me and my wife are going to meet his family out there, and so uh, we're uh, we're flying up on Thursday. Y'all are driving up on Friday, and then uh, we're going to take that week to go visit family up in Georgia. Make our way up to St. Louis. The boys want to go and see a ball game, Cardinals game out there. Oh, and cool. See the Gateway to the West. But then uh, I am going to drive back, visiting family again, and being able to jump right into Escape WinterCon right after that yeah, what makes it problematic. Rough. Yeah. We'll kind of have to probably play it by year. I, I still have the suite booked. Yeah. <laughs> like, I haven't canceled it. Uh, this so man does not give up, folks. Saying there's a chance. <laughs> yeah. did, you, did you have a did, ticket already or no? Did you buy I haven't bought a ticket. Con? Okay. I don't expect them to sell out, right? What do no, you think? They were uh, at... Uh, I don't know. I think they might sell out, actually. Uh, really? Well, I don't know how many they were selling. I saw an update today that somebody was a little disappointed in the turnout, actually. Somebody had asked what they were Oh, on. really? Yeah, somebody said that they... Because Gen Con announced had just bought the same weekend. Ticket 324 oh. or something. Wasn't Gen Con going to so, go most, mostly yeah. virtual? No, they're going to be in person. They're, oh, no, it's, it's a person. They're yeah, cutting it's a person. their sure. attendance in half. Yeah. So I think they're only allowing like... 100,000? Only, only, only like 30,000? No, like 30 to 40,000. Yeah. 100,000 is somewhere. only half. Yeah, 30 to 40,000 is what I heard. So uh, it's, the, it's the publishers that said they're going virtual. A lot of the publishers yeah. are choosing not to have an on-site presence. Yeah. They want to be virtual. Uh, but that impacted Escape WinterCon because that's the same weekend yep. as Escape WinterCon. Yeah. yeah. With everything going on, I mean, you know, let's face it, COVID still hasn't been beat yet. And I think being in a convention hall with 30 to 40,000 people, yeah. <laughs> regardless of if you're vaccinated or not, you know, they're guaranteed. I, I don't care about that. I'm just there that 30 aren't. to 40,000 number is a, just, right. that's yeah. a lot. Of just, just in general is a lot. For me, right. I, I I decided to put that's it off a lot until of funk. next year. That's a lot of body funk. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you, you get, you know, you get uh, convention crud. You know, they call uh, it con- on a regular crud. day, we come back regular, feeling like yeah, crap. Yeah. Yeah. Right, exactly. So it's uh, mm-hmm. with COVID, mm-hmm. it'd be like convention it's a COVID, lot of cans you know, of spaghettios. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> We'd be in the ICU coming back. That's like what, yeah, like hundred. So, like, but uh, Escape WinterCon has always been a smaller function. It well, has, it, I think it has been around a lot. Yeah, like 800 people, uh, I think, is like the most tickets they sell or something something close to that. But Dan and I are going to be going to that for sure. Yeah. So I'm not giving up hope. I'm hanging on to that room until that cutoff. Yeah. Like and, that last minute cutoff of having to cancel the room. And actually, a smaller convention may not be bad. Like I said, I think they were in the low three. It was like 314 or 315. Somebody said they just bought a ticket yesterday, and that's what they were on. And somebody else commented, oh, I, I thought it would have been much higher than that. But, but I'm totally cool with but that. But yes, yeah, a smaller con may not be so bad. I mean, um, we went last year. I don't know how many people were there last year. There was uh, there was a big room that was fairly full. We got a cut off into a smaller room, and we hung out with our group and played a bunch of games. Games, but I, yeah. you know, if we have a big room and you spread just a couple hundred people out over there, um, I right. think it could still be a good thing. Yeah, so. we could always go across the street to the Perkins and uh, yeah, get, get some pie there. and Popeyes. play <laughs> games. Popeyes, yeah, right across the street. <laughs> the yeah. Perkins was open twenty four hours. We were over there playing games. Yeah, we were. Yeah, getting pie. 
at uh, what, one in the morning or something. Yeah. Sean's, Sean's clever. Yeah, there you go. That's right. That's what we played. A little, little clever. That's so clever. Yeah. And a yeah. lot of Popeye's chicken. That was great. Mm. Escape oh, Wintercon is better yeah. for some of you than others of us. <laughs> but, uh, that, uh, that went right through me. But, I've uh, never seen you go so pale. Yeah, I, was, I was worried I was, about was, your health. I was about ready to pass out over a game of Thunder Alley there. Yeah. It was bad. And wow. I did pass out. Yeah. Yeah, she did. Yeah. Yeah. I talk about guys we talk about for like a living. Yeah. I mean, I know. Popeye's chicken destroyed y'all? No, not. Hey, not no. y'all. It was, it was not y'all here. It was me and somebody else. It was I me was and fine. The person got ill. I can't remember who the other one was. But yeah. and every time I went back and got more chicken, he would look at me and got sick. <laughs> Dude, just watching me down it. Not gonna do it. <laughs> so what's up with the retreat? When is that gonna happen? Uh, it's November. November. I forget which week in November. It's the third week of November. It's the week before Thanksgiving. And, uh, and is it down in Miami? It's uh, they're Orlando. Having, they're having one in Miami in September, and then in November they did. A, they're doing a second one in Orlando. Uh, oh, very cool! Tom mm-hmm. had just mentioned as a side note, he was doing one of his uh, Tom Vassell on the Dice Tower was doing one of his uh, live chats, and somebody just in the live chat uh, a couple of months ago just put out there said, "Hey, would you ever consider doing another one?" Because they had pretty much filled up the Miami one, and Tom uh, just kind of off the cuff, he was like, "Well, you know, if if people are interested, he goes, if if people are interested in something <laughs> like that, he goes just." email me personally and i'll put your name on a list and if i get enough emails then you know we'll look into it and then a couple weeks later um uh, i called well, robert and, immediately called yeah, me and says called, you need to email him now yeah. I, I, he's like <laughs> yeah. i want this to happen i need yeah. people to email him so we both emailed him and a couple weeks later we got an email back saying all right you're on the list and we're talking to vendors and ends up they're going to be putting it back at the uh, carib royale uh, in orlando which is where they have dice tower con uh they yep. limited it as they do to their retreats they limited it to 200 people so it was 200 tickets um he released the tickets i think they sold out in about a week and a half two weeks and uh we we jumped on it uh, i know william's going um ben um uh from uh, we he's oh uh, ben will be there yeah ben he's gonna be there he's a regular over at your turn i believe dan's going so there's a, a handful of us that are going to be but uh, going to the the dice tower retreat in november so that'll be fun very cool yeah, yeah. It's That'll nice fun, to get back yeah. to cons, kind of meeting people in person, you know, yeah. hoping, hoping, hopefully bring in the, uh, the mobile rig and, we're gonna and get some live stream, at least maybe do some phone calls from on site. Yeah, that'd be cool. We're going to do some high frontier there as well. Um, that's so the plan. That's uh, a very complex <laughs> game. That get we're your gonna... physics books out, yep. folks. Probably eight to 10 hours yeah. of high frontier. Are so. you going to be playing that, Carlos? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, He's already committed. I got my no dos ready. Ben's going to play Dan, me, Carlos. <laughs> You're going to like just make lines at the table. Yeah. And, <laughs> <yep>. <laughs> Ready to go, yeah. yeah. Five or six of us in there, so we'll see if we can <laughs> wrangle maybe uh, one of the Dice Tower guys to play. That'd be interesting, see if they'd sit down for eight hours to play. Probably not. I, will, I will go ahead and bring you guys cans of SpaghettiOs for you. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah. load us up. Yeah, yeah. Just load y'all up. <laughs> yeah, sweet. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, uh, that's the Dice Tower Retreat in November. So Gen Con and, Dice Tower and Escape Winter Con are both the same weekend. Stone Myers the weekend before that. I know that... Uh, PAX East. I was going to say, a lot of people are talking about the or the PAX Unplugged, yeah. Um, a lot of people are yes, talking PAX about Unplugged. Unplugged up in uh, Pennsylvania. Do we know anything? Is, is that still happening? Oh, it's happening. Yeah, I see, I've seen a lot of people talking about it. I, I My guess is that we're between the other couple of cons we're doing. We might be conned out by them, but we keep talking about we want to make uh, a trip. Yeah. Ant Labs offered us a place to crash. Yeah, exactly. I, I don't know. <laughs> Anthony well, agreed with it. it. Yeah, Francis did. Anthony was, <laughs> <laughs> wasn't so on board with the idea. But, he kind of uh, gave her the side eye. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, well, what? You're inviting <laughs> people over to the house? <laughs> So, uh, but she said, if we want to crash, oh, well, so I got it. I got it on video. Yeah, oh, exactly. Yeah. Weird so, folk coming to my house. So we'll see. But yeah. yeah, cons are picking up. I mean, people are getting back out and things are happening. So we'll see, you know, how they go. And uh, I know I was watching Stegmeyer's, Jamie Stegmeyer's live, uh, weekly live uh, Facebook. chat, Facebook chat that he does YouTube uh, stuff. And uh, he kind of inferred that he's, uh, he, he mentioned that he's, uh, uh, a bit of a introvert. He's mm-hmm. always been an introvert, and he mentioned that he's still not completely comfortable with crowds and the COVID stuff. So mm-hmm. it'll be interesting to see how that goes. Um, uh, um, he mentions he wears a mask out in public and stuff a lot, but I'm looking forward to meeting him. That'll be a lot of fun. This so. this year will be the determining factor whether or not the conventions come back full force. Yeah, are we getting, yeah. Ba- are we getting back to normal? Yeah, that, that's a good question. We'll have to see. This will be the I I um, if folks if you, if you listen to this, follow the rules. They go to conventions. I don't know how many times yeah. we go. We don't see people follow convention rules. Yeah. And for me, it's it's don't even think. You know, for me, I don't even think about the, how I feel about it. 
Yeah. I, I also think about the comfort of the people around me. Sure. And that's it. That's right. all it is. They're they're not doing it to be mean. They're doing it to it make it everyone. Everybody has a everyone, different situation yeah. at home. Just exactly. And, and I get it. And your turn. We all follow that way. If if someone at the table wants us to mask up, we will. Yeah. Gladly mask up. And if that's what they want. Oh, I'm gonna bring my mask for sure. Yeah, just, I mean, just in I, case. I, if I don't have to wear it, I won't wear it. But uh, I will. I, Hopefully, you, full face. It'll be an improvement. Oh, yeah, um, yeah. I could could be a little. Right. Yeah. yeah, look at the hair. <laughs> this guy over here. Okay. Yeah, I do. Should yeah. I tell a story about Dice Tower? About the uh, the guy that came out of the bathroom? About, oh uh, man. Follow the rules. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I think you've told him, but what was the story? What was it? Gun, was it uh, gummy uh, bears? What was he handing out? Oh, oh that's right. Okay. No, 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 no. Dan, I what, I took, Dan I, and I took a break. We go into the men's room. A guy walks out of the stall, okay? And not uh, a urinal, but he walks out of the stall <laughs> directly out of the bathroom. Doesn't go and wash his hands or anything, right? So Dan and I are washing our hands as he does this. We just happen to be walking behind him because we're going to the same hall. Well, he sits down at a, like a huge round table. So they're, I'm guessing they're probably playing something like, uh, you know, werewolf, ultimate werewolf or something like that. And he reaches into a bag of trail mix and starts pulling out trail mix and then passes <laughs> it around the table nice. to everybody else. Oh, <laughs> dang. Just like, oh, oh you got to be kidding Is that me. a peanut? You want to sit in on that game, right? You want to jump in there? <laughs> <laughs> Community trail so, mix. Yeah, just extra nutty sure. today. Yeah, yeah, extra nutty, yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Follow the rules. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, a shower a day. Don't be that guy. Yeah, one shower a Don't day. Don't be that it's, guy. It's, so two meals, one shower, and three and hours of sleep. Three hours of sleep at least. At least yeah. rules yeah. of one, two, three. And, you one, know, two, you three. follow that yeah. sleep rule exactly. Oh, I do. It I, I, cut, I, cut, I cut it to the three <laughs> hours. Anything more than three he hours, you're wasting me out. your vacation. He's like, he's like, he's like, <laughs> he's trying to like. I, he, I, he rubs like. One more hour, and then I will text Carlos. <laughs> you ready to go? Are you ready to go? Are you up? <laughs> I'm waiting in the living room for you. <laughs> <laughs> and it's creepy because he sits there in the dark, like, and all I see is like the whites of his eyes. <laughs> you ready to go? He's ready fully to go? dressed, ready to go, and I'm like in my boxers trying to find coffee. Yeah, that's not pretty. <laughs> I've seen that one too many times. <laughs> not a pretty sight. I miss convention season. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. All right, uh, let's get into the the final topic, final topic. Uh, gaming adjacent topics. Okay, we're gonna talk a little bit about things that are near gaming or kind of gaming, um, including any modeling, you know, other type stuff. We'll combine that into one segment. Um, for me, I'll talk about Seven Wonders Dual Solo Print. Uh, this week, I printed out the Seven Wonders Dual Solo Print. Cool. So they during the COVID, the uh, the, the company that does Seven Wonders. Uh, put out a solo print and play rule set. So you get this rule set, you get cards that you print out. And today I was uh, chopping them up with my paper cutter, getting them in the sleeves, kind of reading through the rules to learn how to play Seven Wonders Duel solo. Uh, pretty cool to be able to get like a little mini expansion for a game you love yeah. for free. I downloaded the uh, the PDFs on that probably four, five, six months ago, and just never got around to printing them out. So I finally did. Yeah, so and, that, I did that's, it. That's cool. So yeah, we'll have to play your printed version of it. So uh, solo, I can see if yeah, see if it's worth uh, <laughs> together. Worth, yeah, together. <laughs> solo. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we'll, 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 we'll sit. I'll bring my copy. Bring. Oh no, it's uh, there are cards that you have to use from the printout. But yeah, I was gonna yeah. say. But there's uh, each one is it's it's a different. Uh, is it a god? You you no, it, it's like historical leaders. figures. There's like Caesar in that's there. Right. Leaders, or, yeah. Caesar. Cleopatra, and you pick a different leader, right? You play against them. You're gonna you, you can play against them. You're gonna flip cards. They're gonna dictate what they do, and then you're gonna do your seven wonders duel actions. Each so, one of them has a different style, from what I understand. Yep. So they each play differently. So you want to try to beat each one of them. Maybe once you beat them, put them away, and then just see if you can work your way through all the different leaders and beat all the different styles. That sounds like fun. So yeah, well let's let's learn that one. Are you learning? sleeved it up and everything? Learned I mean, you can borrow it too. It's yeah, all yeah, sleeved sure. up and ready to go. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, so it, it's He's sleeved up. I, well, it's paper, like literal paper. It's not <laughs> quality cards here, homie. Yeah. You can break out the laminate. Laminate. I, right? yeah, right. yeah. His wife is a teacher. <laughs> She's a you teacher. She got card yeah, laminate everywhere around card here. Stock. Yeah. yeah, but they're not going to be equal size. Like cutting them to exact equal sizes. Too stock? much work. Yeah. yeah. I'll figure it out. Wow. But it's done. Okay, it's done. Oh, Achievement it's done. unlocked for Carlito. Yeah, That's a new cool. one. Sleeving there paper. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Rob, I'll go. Yeah, uh, Arkham. Rob and Emmy, tell us about the the Arkham TV series. And we won't get too deep into it. It is an adult uh, rated R. Um, How old are you, Emmy? Yeah, fifteen. She's uh, fifteen. She was old enough. It was a little awkward. A few of the points, the uh, watching with my fifteen year old daughter. But there were, uh, wow. yeah, there are some there's some nudity and some things in the show. But oh, it was, no. Uh, yeah, no, no, no. It was a uh, it was a good show, and I, I just heard not too long ago that they canceled it. They did not renewed it for a, another season, which uh, I heard there were some people. Not happy with that decision. They were up in arms about it a little bit. But uh, I'll let Emmy pick up here. What did you think of it? Oh, I loved it. Yeah, she it liked was it a lot. <laughs> awesome. Mm-hmm. What's the story? Because I, I know it's Arkham Horror, but I think, isn't it modern? A, it's a little uh, bit modern. It's 1960s, it's... 1950s. Yeah. Okay, so not quite like the 20s or, or you know, early 19th century. No. It's like, what you kind of do is you kind of, it's following like the storyline kind of thing. And it starts with, you have this family and everything and there's the people moving around everyone's helping each other out so like you start like this like really kind of small really helpful community and everything and then there's this one guy who's the main character and you start finding out more about his past you kind of get more into like the dark ritual kind of stuff and then you're following him and how now after finding out this information how the family and community is changing and all these weird things start happening it's like well who do we tell who do we not tell the truth to and it just you're kind of following this whole thing and it's just like a story of wow and you kind of sit there sometimes like wow that was a dumb move but then other times you sit there and you're like I would have never made the same decision or I would have made the same exact decision. Just kind of like you sit there and you listen to how they think through it versus how you would think through it. How many episodes? I do not know. I think it was about 12-ish. Um, so it's a, good, it's a good series. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was it was definitely got into so it. it's one season. Yeah, it was one season. Um, they tackled social issues. Uh, they, they're definitely, they, they tackled segregation. Um, That's 60s. Yeah, right. yeah. It was a, a lot of that. So there's a, there's a white sheriff. It's in the deep south uh, in a, a pretty rural uh, setting. And uh, there's uh, it, it doesn't shy away from that. I mean, there's a white sheriff who's after the, all the main characters mm. are are African American uh, black characters, and so there's a lot of uh, run-ins between them. Uh, there's people in the community who uh, they at one point here they they buy a big house um, because they run into some money in the family, and there's there's definitely a white versus black um, situation going on there, where the community's trying to force them out. So they they definitely tackle some some social issues in it as yeah, well. Yeah, I mean, that sixties was the the beginning of the civil rights, some some of the big civil rights issues. Uh, yeah, yeah. So they they. So wait, where is this streaming? Uh, it's or on. It was HBO. Um, HBO Max. HBO Max uh, is where we oh, watched okay, it. Cool. Well, was although, it called Love and Something? Lovecraft Country. Yes. Was, yep. Lovecraft Country. I'm All sorry, right. I should have mentioned that. Oh, yep. okay. I. You kept saying Arkham Horror, and I'm like, Arkham. I've never heard of this it's, Arkham Horror show. Now oh, that no. you said Love Country. Lovecraft Country. Yeah, it's based on yes, the Arkham I've mythos. Watched that. Oh, you did. Yeah, oh, okay. That's, that's a great series. I'm, yeah. I, I'm pretty upset that they're that they're not. Uh, it's redoing probably canceled another because season. of the touchy subject. Could be, yeah. Uh, I mean, that's pretty common nowadays, though. I mean, if you watched, I mean, they did uh, them. No. You know, that was a series that they did. Um, that was very, you know, controversial as far as like, you know, uh, uh, African American black people moving into a predominantly white uh, neighborhood during the '60s, '70s uh, time frame. And no. I mean, it's a little over the top, and I think it was intentionally that way. Where sure, yeah. Uh, the white families were like going way out of their way to try and drive these, you know, this one family out of the neighborhood. Yeah. So it's uh, not, it's, it's no, not unheard of in, in today's market. So I wonder, absolutely not. I wonder what yeah. killed it for this series. What, what wouldn't have brought it yeah, back? I Is was, it the Lovecraft part of it? Like that whole but demonic there's no, but thing? There's, there's nothing on, there's no real Lovecraft theme out there really At right the now. the very yeah. beginning. There was like a little bit of Cthulhu stuff in that on that series, but that show really didn't go very deep into the Lovecraft stuff. No, not that I, not that I thought. No I Cthulhu mean, coming out. Some... No demonic rituals. No bail. It, it makes me scary. Uh, I mean, there's some there's some stuff like that, but uh, without giving anything away, because when I first saw it, I was like, whoa, I that's pretty cool. Like how. The, the one uh, heavy set black woman that was in with the white family it, when uh, the brother and sister, quote unquote, the brother and sister were like uh, helping her change, I guess you could say. I don't want to give anything away if you know what I'm talking <laughs> sure, about. Man. Yeah, but yeah, uh, Emmy, Emmy remembers it. <laughs> She's nodding and smiling over here. 
I just hope they. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm. HBO's been trying to doing that, uh, canceling some of these shows. They're supposed to bring back Doom Patrol for season two. That was sweet. Um, or I, I really want to see that again. That was a far fetched series. <laughs> I never seen Brendan Fraser drop f bombs so much. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he seems like such Charles a nice guy, though. Oh, no, he's he's a uh, he's a. Uh, Potty mouth. He's oh, a potty oh, mouth. Yeah. Don't one. you besmirch my Encino man. Uh, oh, no. <laughs> yeah, he talks like he just has a, a intelligence of a caveman. I can tell you that much. Mm. He plays a race car dri- driver, too. No, no race car driver. Uh, Mike, you got some items on the gaming adjacent topics. What you got? Uh, let me see my list here. Well, I mean, I was I remember we I di- haven't changed this portion of our list for a few weeks here, but uh, I got some audio books and a and a PC game on there. And uh, if, since we're talking about shows, uh, I put Loki on there. Ah, I haven't uh, watched it yet. Just, yeah, they just uh, I think it was a week or two ago that the last episode was on. Only six episodes for this season, but they definitely said that he will be back for a second season. So they are going to do another one. Cool. Unlike uh, Falcon Winter Soldier. WandaVision. And WandaVision. And, yeah. Help but, me understand. Uh, but, what is this meme I keep seeing about like a Loki alligator thing? Is that part of the uh, show or is that just... It, it is in the show, yes. there's a, There was a Loki alligator. I guess you got to watch it. No, got to watch now. Got to watch it. There's multiple Loki's. I'll just like I have a lot of nightmares about alligators. Like recurring nightmares (laughs) since I was a kid about alligators. Seeing that Loki alligator meme is a bit creepy. (laughs) Little touch. I don't want to trigger those recurring nightmares again. PTSD. (laughs) Right. (laughs) As a kid, I got lost at Hillsboro State Park uh, while canoeing, and I had to get saved by the uh, the park rangers out there. Um, so it's very nightmarish with but, alligators. Bro. That's a recurring thing with you. You did that as an adult as well. <laughs> <laughs> Got sucked out to sea there. Uh, had to have the uh, Coast Guard come and rescue you. Hey, I'm, I'm 0 for 2 when uh, it comes to canoes. Story, but yeah. Yeah. Okay. Jeez, man. <laughs> You don't, you don't need awesome. to be living in Tampa Bay. Stay away, stay away from water. <laughs> yeah, stay away. So I did WandaVision. I didn't watch the Bucky thing. I have not seen that one. Um, is, is Loki better than worth it? Um, well, the, the Falcon and Winter Soldier, uh, series, that show, I kind of, to me, that was more like a, of a realistic type of approach to heroes in my opinion. Uh, but I would put Loki probably maybe a notch above that one, but I mean, WandaVision is like, that's setting the bar pretty high. Yes. Yeah, it was as good. Far as I loved it. Those it shows good. go. Yeah. But uh, it was it was interesting. There were there were a couple of parts where it was, it was a little bit of a lull for me, but it all kind of comes full circle at the end. Where uh, I thought the ending was really good. Uh, I won't. I mean, by now I think there's spoilers everywhere, but I won't say anything. But there is a a main character that shows up at the last episode. Oh, I haven't that seen is yet. Supposed to, that is supposed to be in the you know the Phase Four MCU movies. Hmm. So. Very cool. Yeah. yeah. More to come. Tell me about your audio books. I'm a big audio book of file. What, what do you got here? Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, I listed a few that I had finished recently. Um, Recursion, which is, uh, it's a book about, it's like in the near future, it jumps in time. So it'll, it'll go from the future to the, to like the eighties, you know, and it's this. Quantum leap. Um, <laughs> yeah, kind of like that. It, it follows like two people's lives, and then eventually they kind of merge together uh, and meet in the middle. But the story continues from there on. But it's it's uh, very heavily uh, driven by time travel and the ability to do that. And and it starts out. I mean, this is the very beginning of the book, so I'm not giving anything away. But it starts out uh, where there's this thing. Um, I forget what they called it, but it was like. Uh, they called it a sickness where people were experiencing things uh, from other lives that have like recent lives, but they were actual people. So they could give you like really deep details about a previous life and that like if they were married to somebody else and you could go talk to that person and they would confirm all the information that this other person was giving, but people thought that they were going crazy. And as the story goes on, it kind of like, um, tells you why this is happening and, and this whole corporation thing behind it. And, uh, very cool 
book I, w- I would recommend if you're in the time travel i'm huge in the time travel i can't books. like that the back and forth and the butterfly effects and all that oh like, yeah too much well, i mean not all of them are like that and yet I he likes star trek what's wrong with you <laughs> as long as Q's uh, not in there, I'm good. Oh, Q's yeah. the best. Q drives me nuts. Q's the best. John Q, Delancey. Q is the best. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so anyway, another book that I read. I won't. I won't go through all three, but uh, just I, I want to hear Ready Player you. Two. If you're gonna pick any, I want to yeah, hear about Ready Player was, Two because I, I read. I, I read I Ready Player to. One. So Ready Player One uh, to me was it was a great book. It was a surprise. I did not think it was going to be that good. I I used to not care for Will Wheaton. Uh, narrating books. I've listened to a few books that he's done and I, I didn't care for it for him until this book. Like when he got to end of ready player one, I mean, it was very emotional. I mean, not that I broke down and cried, but it was like very emotional at the end. And I think he carried that book really well. Uh, Ready player two. It just, I mean, ready player one is a hard book to beat. I didn't expect it to be as good, but it was, it was a bit of a letdown. It took this whole, uh, like with the first book, it was like, you know, finding the keys and, you know, this whole other thing, whereas it's like 20 years, not 20 years, a little bit into the future where um, uh, Percival and all the other characters have gotten their money and, you know, they're continuing on with the Oasis. And it's this, I mean, this is very early in the book, but it's this device that actually taps into your brain. You're only allowed to wear it for like 12 hours because any longer than that, when you come out of it, you can like turn into a vegetable, like your brain kind of goes to mush, but it, it takes the path of a kind of like a role playing game where Uh instead of the three keys, they're trying to find the seven shards. And there's this whole story, very similar to the first one, but it just didn't, it just didn't gel uh, very well in my opinion, because you know, it's not like these underdogs that are trying to, yeah. win, you know, they're not coming from poverty and they're not these underdogs trying to win the game against this huge corporation. It's we're already rich, but you know, there's another thing that's going on that we need to find these seven shards. And it was, I mean, it was good, but it wasn't, it wasn't great. This is probably why I haven't heard much about it since its release. I remember when it released, probably. I really thought, Oh, I got to get that. I got to get that. Because I did all the, I read all the books before the the movies ever came out and and loved it. The audio book was yes. amazing. Yeah, so I guess yeah. they I, I, can't recommend it. Is what you're saying? I, I mean, if you feel the need to really, you know, no. continue the story, I, I, it would be a pass for me. Good. I'm glad to hear that. I'll take a pass. Yeah. And I, I mean, we only got so much time, right, on our yeah, hands. I'm right. glad you wasted your time. And make good decisions. Oh, yeah. thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> thank you for wasting your time. <laughs> what are these video games you're talking about? This Dorf from uh, Dorf Romantic. I put this on here for uh, for William because I know he's the PC gamer in our yeah, group. Yeah, I, I had it up actually. I'm here looking at a bit right now on Steam. It's it's a very relaxing. Um, it's so it's it's a randomly generated map. And it's all hex tiles and all the edges of the tiles will have like different things. So it might have forests or buildings or uh, farmland or it looks pretty. uh, It's a very pretty game and it changes every single time you play it. And as you, uh, cause you, you only start out with like one hex in the middle and then you start building out from there, but you only have X number of tiles to make this land with unless you like do these mini objectives so they might say like they start out small in the beginning so you need to chain you know 15 trees together and then you'll get five more tiles and Hmm. you have to put x number of pieces of river together and then you get x more tiles but as you branch out it gets harder and harder because it literally gets up to like okay now you have to chain 800 and some odd trees together and then so and it's this balancing act of because you can see like maybe the next two or three tiles so you can kind of plan ahead but it comes there's this balancing act of uh if because once you complete some of the tree, like I'll take the trees, for instance, if you complete some of the trees, uh, if you can block off so you can't build any more trees, you're also completing an, uh, an objective by doing that. So it's like this, do I risk blocking off this huge forest? And, you know, I might get one that's asking for 700 or 800 trees in the future. You know, it's, it's just a balancing act and, and, the reason why I started playing it was uh, I was listening to a man versus meeple 
uh, they were doing like a chat and they had, um, uh, what's his name from Gloomhaven? I can't. Isaac Childress. Can't. Isaac Childress. So they were, they're like, oh man, you know, have you been playing this? And Isaac was like, yeah, I've been playing this, you know, and they're kind of talking about it. And they were like, cause I mean, Isaac is kind of like a genius. You oh, know, yeah. his, his, and they're like, Isaac, uh, like, you know, what's your typical score on this game? And he's like, oh, I don't know, like uh, 30,000. And they're like, you know, <laughs> their minds were blown. I haven't gotten over 10,000. I've already got 25 hours in this game, and I still have not been wow. able to beat like 10,000 plus points. And he's at the 30,000 plus. <laughs> like, I can't even imagine. Three you know, times you would smarter than do. you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, Dwarf Romantic, it's all one word and it's with a K at the end. Well, let's yeah. hope he, and, somebody makes that into a board game. It looks like a board yeah, game. Yeah. It looks all those hexes. It looks and, like it could be a board yeah, game. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it's just this little relaxing. You could put music on in the background. It's it's all ambiance, you know, like so you hear like birds chirping and stuff like that. <laughs> and there's a little bit more to it, but I mean, for the most part, that's that's the game. Hmm. And then when you run out of tiles, the game's over, and then you just start over, from, uh, you know, with the one uh, hex again. Hmm. Anybody oh. else got other gaming adjacent topics? Not that I can think of. Uh, I, I've been pinning models, uh, mm -hmm. so I'm having to learn how nice. to pin. I got some metal models for my Blood Bowl team. Shocking. And their arms keep falling off. Oh, yeah. And they keep losing bits, so I had to learn how to pin. Uh, pinning is when you take uh, a model. In these little miniature models, they're not very big. But you take a, a, a tiny hand drill, and you drill a tiny little hole in one side of the bit, and then you drill another tiny little hole in the other side of the bit, and then you, like, snip off a piece of, uh, like, a paper clip and make a rod that you're going to use to glue between the main body and the arm. So you kind of pinned that arm into slot, you know, giving it some structural uh, rigidity, something to hold on to. So I've been having to learn how to pin which really came in handy today because the the, the camera mo the motion track camera the camera that runs back and forth uh, on the track it's got buttons on the side so when it hits the side wall it knows to go back the other way so one of those buttons fell off so what I ended up having to do <laughs> is take that pinning drill and I drilled into the side and stuck out a piece of paper clip so that it goes inside the box of the machine and pushes the button <laughs> where the uh, the inside the inside <laughs> to get it to turn around. So it worked. Hey, when modeling has uh, made me a better uh, a video, you know, producer. So yeah, <laughs> nice. I'm an engineer now, folks. Yeah, <laughs> something <laughs> not quite MacGyver. And mm -hmm. hey, hey, Michael, you've been doing some folded space stuff. Oh yeah, I but the last one I just finished was for um terraforming Mars. Yeah, big um, one. So just a funny story about this. I've been doing folded space inserts for a long time and for those that don't know it's like uh Evacore type foam that's, you know, pre-cut. You you punch them out and then you use some kind of PVA glue to glue them together. It could be like Elmer's or I use like a Gorilla wood glue, you know, to glue them together. And I used to you know, lay out all the pieces, you know, cause they show you like each tray, you know, you build it this way and I would lay out each piece and then I would run the glue down the edge of one piece and then down the edge of the next piece. And I'd have like this silicone brush that I'd be cleaning everything. I mean, it would literally take me over an hour to do like a single insert. Not me. And, and I don't mind doing that. You know, you put music on or, you know, podcast or something. And then I watched this uh, video, like somebody making them and they just like pushed all the edges together flat and they ran lines of glue, like perp, 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 perp. And then they just folded everything on top of each other and stuck it together. And they literally like built an insert like in 20 minutes where it would take me over an hour to do. And I was like, what the? Let I've been doing this that. wrong my whole life. And then it, right. Cause I mean, I had like a stack of them at one point, like over a year ago, where I was just like, I don't even want to look at them right now because it takes me so long to build them. Hmm. And then I had like six of them you know, in the past months or whatever. And I saw this video and I was like, Oh, let me try that. And boom, I banged out that first one. I was like, I'm ready to build another one. Like I was like going through all of my <laughs> like at that point. I, I like, want to link to this video. Send it to me in messenger. Cause I, that's the reason I haven't touched my TI four folded space. There's so many bits in there. Champions I pulled out the champion. champions mid guard. Yeah. Don't. Yeah. Yeah. Good shame. The champion shame. One is shame. so shame. worth it though, man. It's so worth it. Send me the, the link to one. this video that you're talking about. I want to learn yeah, how to do it like this. He's I'll do that. Do it. It's do it. it totally changed my whole thought process on it. And, and, you know, when you see things like that, you're just like, I would have never thought to do it that way. You know, you would have just kept doing it the same way you, you've been doing it. But uh, I'm glad I found that video. So cool. 
Well, that, that wraps us up. Uh, so to all our topics that we had, it was a very good conversation. I want to thank Emmy for joining us uh, on this, you know, her first time on the podcast first gaming timer. with us today. Uh, Michael joining us by remote. Hopefully y'all at home can't tell. Uh, that's the goal. <laughs> that's really him sitting there. It's not a, uh, not a computer yeah, monitor. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, stop touching Michael. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> William Robert, as always, uh, so glad to have you guys. I'm Carlos. I'm Rob. I'm Michael. I'm William. And I'm Emmy. There and we're the go. Beans and Dice Podcast, a podcast about how we, how we how game. We game. Okay. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. And have a good night, folks. Thanks, everybody.